what are the steps that you have to take to keep, you know, an emerging like franchise show fr uh, fresh? How, how how does it evolve? Um, I think I've I've done that with a bunch of other series, and I will say this genuinely, not just because I'm sitting on a panel with them. In order to really keep a show fresh, you have to have great partners in your production company, because without that, you you can't move forward. So what you have to do is you have to recognize the core ingredients that make your show a success, keep them, but make sure that the format of the show doesn't get so repetitive that the audience feels that they've seen the show and they know exactly what to expect. So we do a bunch of different stuff with Brent's team. We're very critical of the show. Um, we're always trying to vary stuff so the show doesn't feel over formatted and it's surprising. We stunt it where we can. Um, you know, we really think hard about what um, funny things we could cast in, what amazing objects could be found. And we try and put the show's air order in the right space. We invest a lot of money from history in off-air campaigns. We've really worked to grow the guys off-air as talent. And I think the, the thing that you really need partnership with your production company is, is you have to keep your talent interested mm -hmm. because it's really hard to do these shows. And the normal arc of a show, and in this the Harrisons have been spectacular and that they haven't been the norm, is that the talent gets bored with the show well before the audience gets bored with the show. So how you keep the talent entertained and engrossed and refreshed, it, it's just a constant puzzle. And what are some of the strategies for doing that? Um, well, I think with Rick, because he is so smart, um, and because I think he truly cares about objects, I think finding things that astonish and surprise him are really important. Yeah, I think the audience lives the, sh the show through the characters, so it's important for the characters to get excited, and then the audience uh, feeds off of that excitement. And to Mary's point, we really, we were the kind of like the new kids. I'd worked on a show for a, a season and then moved on, and that was kind of uh, my learning process. And Mary uh, has probably 10 shows that, that most executives through their career would have one or two shows at, at the level of hits that she's had. So when we were lucky enough to be partnered, we just listened. And, and you know, growing a show or keeping a show up, the, I think the easy thing to do is just think, okay, this show's working, let's move on to the next one. But it takes constant retooling and not too much that the audience necessarily even knows that it's happening, but it's it's keeping it keeping it fresh. Um, and we do we we try to get maybe if it's a sports item that might air around a sporting event, um, we might hold that piece for longer. Uh, there's a lot of little things to do I think to keep the audience, uh, you know, on, on the rise. And Rick is very funny, and I think what these guys do that's so great is they, you know, find stuff that's going to make them laugh. Don't you think? So he, 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 whenever he can be fully spontaneous, the shows are at their best. There was a clip of him on uh, Letterman, which I tried to bring today, but it was t taken down. And he, he was totally filled the room. He's unbelievable talent. And it was an amazing little segment. Uh, the guy has great natural talent. But that's unusual in your field. He's, is he one out of 100 or? Yeah, even more than that. I, I, but to history's credit, they, you know, he, he was great for, for our show, but getting on Letterman, you know, going in front of an, uh, you know, uh, public speaking and all that stuff, that was stuff that Rick wasn't that comfortable with. And with some media coaching, and, and, and he's tremendous now. C compared to, he, I, I don't think he was above average when he started with that stuff, but now he, he really holds his own. And, uh, <coughs> you know, we're very proud of, of what he does when he goes on those shows, because Letterman can... You know, he can eat people up. <laughs> Brent, what next? After after Porn Stars, you and Rob started calling on absolutely all your old friends with every concept that you... Yeah, I mean, I, I just looked at it um, like music. Uh, you know, you don't want to be a one-hit wonder. And um, <coughs> Mary's old boss, who now is running uh, A&E, um, this gentleman, David McKillop, said... 
as hard as it is, as it is you have to forget about Pawn Stars. And he didn't mean forget about it and don't keep making uh, my number one show. He just meant don't rest on your laurels. And we got very aggressive, hired more people for development. For us, development is sales. So that's, that's the part of the business that's going to grow the back end of it. And th that was our time. Uh, we were going to a, a television market uh, about a year and a half ago, and Mary said, do you realize that, you know, how left field is going to be received at this market? And I, I just thought she was being um, very nice. But that, that w I could tell we were one of the hot players at that time. So we had to strike, and we had to strike quickly uh, because we didn't know how long this show will keep us, um, you, know, in, you know, near the top. So we just doubled down, and I think that's, that's what you have to do if you want to grow it. And so now we love history. They're by far our favorite network to deal with, but we also have to, you know, continue to develop for other networks. Uh, network execs move around. Um, but, yeah, so we try to diversify and also not just – be known as the guys who make shows like Pawn Stars. We have a, a show for A and E that comes out Monday night called Monster in Laws, mm -hmm. which uh, is very relatable, uh, but but very much. It's nice to watch it from uh, your 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 couch and not actually be in the room with these people because it's <laughs> it's a pretty tense environment. But at the end of the show, we have a, a experts and relationship people who are trying to actually make a difference in these people's lives and fix these broken relationships so it's not just a screaming, yelling show. It, it does have a, a purpose. And I think all of our programming we try to, to, to give a purpose to and not be that kind of low-rent reality TV that, uh, that we all know. So, Rob, uh, after the success of Porn Stars, did the net, were the networks calling you and asking if they could, they could meet with Left Field? Is there a, an inversion of the, the normal process? I think it's, it is a totally an inversion of the process, which is, which is nice to, to be involved with. Um, you don't have to sell as hard. I think also you have to be careful about the projects you're doing because you can get locked up in projects and spend a lot of time that, and, and have little reward <coughs> for it. Um, but I will say also this, that there's been a lot of networks that are coming to left field because of their casting abilities and saying, here's a space that we want you guys to take your team and, and whether it's health inspectors or you know, Food Network's coming to us with a couple things, Science Channel. History's even come in some spaces where we've looked at, but hopefully they don't take it away after you mentioned it. Yeah, <laughs> still in development. But I think um, I think also that what uh, Leftfield has done, there's been a couple projects where networks have come with concepts or ideas, and Leftfield has then said, "Well, we don't think it works in one direction. Let's take it another direction." So it's a collaborative process, but it's not just taking what's being presented. It's also looking at it and saying, okay, we need, to, we need to approach this from a different angle. And that's actually helped get a couple other series on the air. And what's next? I mean, we are essentially doing the same thing that, like Mary said, the network also develops internally. So, yes, you can do the current stuff that's working, and you kind of have to do that to basically establish your baseline for the business. But it's kind of like, what's going to hit next? What's going to be that next show that has a lot of derivative shows that follow it? Um, history always says... Be first, be best, is that right? Be first, be best. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments before we hand over to q and I, I mean, I just think for this room, one of the things that also really made Pawn Stars work is that we truly have been blessed with unusual collaboration <laughs> between production company, you, Rob. Uh, we have a phenomenal agent that we work with on with the Harrisons then it's been one of the best experiences of my life because everybody is in it to keep the show successful for as long as we possibly can. And therefore, people keep the big picture in mind instead of getting lost in small, granular victories. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when you are running a hit, you're in it for the long haul. And I think that's really important for legal BA teams to know. It's like you don't, you know, you don't um, destroy the village in order to win the war. You want to be in business together for a really long time. Mm -hmm.